we frequently talk about that being person-centered language. Um, we learned the importance of safe messaging with suicide prevention as well. We need to treat mental health like we treat physical health. And so when we think about this human-centered or person-centered language, it puts the person first. It doesn't put the illness or the disease first. I personally believe addiction is an illness and um, the science has become more clear in that area. Many times when you talk about a deficit or a problem, people would point to that being a moral failing. But when we talk about person-centered language, you say things like a person is living with or recovering from addiction. They're seeking long-term recovery. It says they're more than that disease. They're a person. You're affirming them. You're speaking with empathy. It provides dignity, respect. It just allows a person to not feel judged and to not be shamed. And it highlights the unique capabilities and talents and strengths of each person as a, a living human creature. We deserve that basic uh, dignity and respect, especially when you learn that addiction found many of these people, not through their actions or lifestyle choices, but doing what the doctor gave them seemingly to get better. And so we, we try to take out the judgment and we try to build the respect so a person has a better or easier pathway toward uh, recovery. So I hope that that's a really loaded question. It's, um, <laughs> it's more than it's more than hypothetical. It's, uh, it's true. People in recovery will acknowledge being treated with respect. They'll thank you after a presentation when you use uh, this person-centered language. They'll say, that's the first time I've been to a presentation where people didn't call us addicts or junkies. And um, oftentimes they'll have tears in their eyes and they'll just thank you. I'll give you one example. I did a webinar, it was a year ago, um, in 2020, oh, two years ago, 2021. And um, two months later, I was doing a presentation on a job site with 500 people uh, near Seattle. And um, there were 12 people who ended up attending, who attended that webinar, who came that day to say thank you for doing a webinar on addiction treatment and recovery. They came to show support and they were the ones then who had me in tears the way they were thanking me for just making a difference in their world. It was probably one of the most touching um, acts of kindness that I'd experienced as a professional. A group of people went out of their way to come and say, we wanna support you, thanks for supporting us. And the hosts at that meeting were blown away, like, wow, we've never seen something like that. Nope. People are people. And if you treat people with respect, here's what can happen. It was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. Wow. That sounds so touching. And, you know, frankly, you know, great advice, like fairly simple to just, you know, treat people well and, you know, have this yeah. human centric approach, but, uh, um, good to be talking about it and kind of the whole yeah, reason. I'm really to, glad to you asked that chat. question. That's frequently <laughs> overlooked. Kevin, if I just built upon that one more time, like a lot of times yeah. I do a, a, a program, either webinar or in person, we've called it straight talk, addiction, treatment and recovery. And I'll bring persons in long term recovery to share their recovery journey. Those stories of lived experience build hope. And um, I did this last fall north of Boston in the U.S. And my three panelists were like, Oh my gosh. So we were using interactive polling, asking different questions. And a couple of the questions were, did hearing these lived experience stories increase your knowledge about addiction treatment and recovery? And it was like 85% said yes. The second one, did hearing these stories increase your empathy and understanding of people in recovery? It was over 94% yes. My panelists separately said, we could see stigma melt. We came in, we saw people with arms crossed, people not comfortable having this conversation, can't believe we're going there. 
to wiping away tears, to recognizing this impacts almost every family. And many people told us after, we've never had this conversation. So that's why this person-centered approach is probably the most important thing we're gonna talk about today. 